My name is Adam Novak, and now we're we'll talking about passing parameters in Python. Parameters can be passed five different ways in Python. They are by reference or value, required arguments, keyword arguments, default arguments, or variable length arguments. Here's an example of passing arguments by reference or by value. So on the left here, once we've defined our main function, we're able to pass a parameter to it by putting the variable inside the parentheses. When we call our function, we can put our variable again inside the parentheses, such that in this case we are passing x to the main function. Inside the main function here, we are operating on it, then inside the function printing out x. So in the first case, we are getting 4, since we are getting 2 plus 2. Once we have exited our main function, we are again printing off x, such that it reverts back to its original value being 2. On the left here though, you can see once we call the function and pass the list to it, and append the value 12 to it, although we exit the function before we print out my list, you can see that we still have the appended value of 12 to the list. This is because on the right here we have passed the list by reference, and on the left we have passed it by value. We can remember that in general sets are passed by reference and arguments are passed by value. Though we must remember that if we are reassigned a new list to my list, once we exited the function and printed out my list, we would still get the original value of my list because my list has been assigned globally. Here is an example of passing arguments by correct position, such that we have the variable name1 and name2 equal to the strings Richard and Wagner. We can pass two parameters to the function such that we have name2 and name1 being passed to the function display, then simply printing off the two parameters. We are first passing name2 to the function since we have not named the variables inside the function appropriately. So name2 will be passed to parameter1 and name1 will be passed to parameter2. So we'll print off the second name first, then the first name, getting Wagner and Richard, rather than Richard and Wagner. In this example here, we are passing arguments by keyword, such that we have word1 equal to hello and sample equal to world. When we pass sample and world to the function, in this case we are naming them appropriately inside the parentheses. So when we do pass the variables to it, the variable sample will be passed to the variable sample inside the parentheses, such that when we print off sample, we'll be printing it off as its correct argument, printing off hello world rather than by correct position. So sample will be passed to the second position and word1 will be passed to the first position because they are appropriately named. In this example here we are defaulting some arguments. This is very useful when we sometimes don't know how many arguments will be input. So in this example here we have a linear equation such that we are defaulting the C value. So if no C value is input, the C value will automatically default to zero. The most important thing to remember when defaulting arguments is the default arguments must always be on the right of the parentheses, such that c is equal to 0 is on the right of the list of parentheses, being x, m, then c. In this case here, we are only passing two parameters to the function linear itself, so that when we print off the function values, we get x is equal to 10, m is equal to 2, and c is equal to 0. In this case, c is defaulting to its value of 0, since we have not passed any parameters to c. Since we have passed a parameter to m, it does not receive its default value of 1, so m will print out 2. Even though m value was passed to the function linear, m would print out 1 in this case. Arguments can also be passed by variable length. This is used when receiving an arbitrary length of parameters. By using a star before the variable name in the parentheses, this will return all the rest of the parameters passed to it inside a tuple. So if we have a look here, we've first got my list equal to a list, a dictionary equal to a dictionary, and a number equal to a value. Then we're defining the function. When we call the function, we are passing three objects to it, such that we're passing the value, then the two sets. Inside of it, we're printing off single is, then the single, then a tuple is a tuple. A tuple, in this case, inside the parentheses, has a star before it. 
This simply means that the rest of the objects passed to the function will be collected inside a tuple, such that we can operate in a tuple. This is handy because some operations are different depending on whether you operate on a tuple, and sometimes you do not know how many parameters you will be receiving. So in this case, when we print off single is single, and we've received single from variable length, we are printing off six. Though when we print off a tuple and printing off a tuple, the, rec the received the received variable f for a tuple, we're actually getting off the tuple containing the dictionary and then the list. This is because we are first passing in the dictionary, then the list, and a tuple is simply collecting the rest of the objects sent to the function. And now let's look at an example. Let's make a list equal to 1, 2, 3. Make num1 and num2 equal to 4 and 8 respectively. Define our main function. And inside it we'll pass the parameters. We'll pass num1. We'll collect the rest of the parameters in a tuple. So we'll call it collect. And then we'll pass the default variable just for fun. So make c equal 12. Inside this main function, we'll use a print statement such that first case we'll print number one equals to num one. Then we will print collected tuple equals and collect because we're collecting into the variable we have called collect using a star. Then we'll print default equals then C. So now down here we can call our main function. So we'll pass num1, then we'll pass num2, then we'll pass my list. Pushing F5 to save and run. As we can see, we are first getting number 1 is equal to 4 because we are passing in number 1 and number 1 is equal to 4 and printing it off to the console. Though in the second case, with its collected tuple here, we are collecting the rest of the parameters passed to the function inside of the tuple and printing off the variable collect. So by using the star before the parameter collect, we are able to collect number 2 and my list inside of a tuple and print off the tuple to the console. We are also printing off a default value being 12 because we have a default value of c is equal to 12. In this case, if we change it so we got rid of number 1 from the parameters list, then ran the program, as you can see we're getting 4 and 8 inside the tuple, because now number 1, number 2 and my list are all being collected inside the tuple. If we however put a parameter over here such that number 1 was on the right of the collected tuple, then ran this program, as you can see this would produce an error. This is because the past parameter of number 1 is now being collected inside of the tuple we have called collect. In this case it is also important to remember that the parameters collecting the tuple should be on the right of the parameters list when possible.